But the one thing I really hate is this super flat hair. I can see where she was going, but somehow it just feels a little unfinished to me. This definitely doesn't feel elegant and it definitely doesn't look expensive. You know my name, Neon Noir, Neon Noir, on my road to fame. I am happy, coming for your spot. Neon Noir, Neon Noir, now let me show you what I got. I got. Hello, my beautiful life rights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crayon in the box. If you are new here, or if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Y'all, guess what? A new season of Drag Race is starting, but this time we are getting global all-stars. This is a season I've been so excited about. I even did a leak the cast a long time ago on it where I broke down who the queens are and what was happening and which ones I was excited to see. If you want to see that video, go ahead and look at the link below. But today we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race Global All-Stars Meet the Queens Edition. That is right, the Meet the Queens just dropped for Global All-Stars and since the season is coming out right after the Olympics, and this is the Olympics of drags because we got 12 queens from 12 different countries competing against each other. The theme for the promo is, you guessed it, the Olympics, where each queen must interpret a different sport. So, without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, from the US of A, it's Miss Alyssa Edwards. And Alyssa Edwards is coming out doing an interpretation of gymnastics or rope swinging. I'm not really sure what sport this is because if you couldn't guess, I am not Sporty Spice in this situation. She's coming out wearing this silver bodysuit with these dangling pieces and these stars all around it. She's then paired it with this really coiffed white hair. First up, I love to see Alyssa Edwards with white hair. When I think of Alyssa Edwards, I usually think of her with this big blonde hair. So for her to do it a little bit different and a little bit more like shapely and a little bit more sculpture, I think this is really interesting and actually really stunning on Alyssa. I also like that the white sort of matches this silver attire. Now let's get into this silver attire. I think that the silver bodysuit is pretty good. You know, sometimes people do a bodysuit and we're like, eh, another bodysuit, but she really elevated it. She's got a lot of the different sculptural pieces coming off of it, and she's got sort of these like dangling pieces on it. Now, is it the craziest, most avant-garde look I've seen? No, but does it work? Absolutely. I think overall it looks chic, but more importantly, her face and head look chic. And I mentioned this because the promo look is what they use as a sort of like little head in the corner when they do their confessionals. So the face needs to be facing. That face is really gotta be like snap and that is exactly what it is. She really put the focus on the top part of her face and the bottom still looks good, but just not as good. All in all, this is a good look and still gonna get a pop. Next up from Drag Race Belgique, we have Athena Likis. And girl, did you notice that Athena switched her names? Wasn't her last name Sora Likis and now she's just changed it to Likis? which I think is a really smart move. Even I, who speaks French, had a hard time saying her last name, so the fact that she made it a little bit easier to pronounce and a little bit easier for people to understand is such a smart move, especially going into a global season. But we are here to talk about the look, so let's get into this look. Athena is coming out representing hurdles. She decided to come out with this a black sort of bodysuit with this black and yellow robe. She's got this black jacket, and this red hair, and these black thigh-high boots. When we get into the outfit and you start looking at it really closely you realize that the actual bodysuit is made out of shoes and I'm like girl that is so smart you said you wanted running let me give you an outfit that is full of shoes and she got laced up yellow and red all across her body and all across her boots to kind of give you that Belgian flag and I like that little introduction of that Belgian flair in it it definitely screams Olympics it definitely screams sports and it definitely gives national pride and let's face it drag is Belgian needs all the recognition it can get because girl that season is struggling and I don't know why because the Queens are actually pretty good but it just needs more people to start watching it. So I'm so excited to see Athena on this season and representing. But the one thing I really hate is this super flat hair. Girl, you did all this work on this bodysuit and then you paired it with flat hair? Why? I think this would have looked a lot better with some taller hair. And I don't think it should have been really coiffed because this vibe doesn't really give 
coiffed hair look. Like something like this would look ridiculous on her. But I think actually had she done some really tall ponytail, slick back ponytail with maybe like one swoosh, something like Chloe Clark usually wears, but in red, I think that would have really suited it. All in all, I love the interpretation and concept of the dress, but she let it down with the hair. That knocked her down a couple of points, but it's still good enough to get a oh. Next up from Drag Race Philippines is Ava Laqueen and Ava Laqueen is coming out representing bodybuilding? Girl, I didn't even know that was a sport. And if she's not representing bodybuilding, please tell me what she's supposed to be representing down below. But Ava Laqueen is coming out wearing this crisscross red sash with this fully rhinestone encrusted dress underneath. She's then paired it with this most ginormous headpiece. But let's get into this look. I love the contrast of materials. I love that this red sash is so prominent and the dress underneath is almost like this mesh material. I also love that the sash has no rhinestones on it and the dress underneath has a lot of rhinestones on it it's definitely giving you that contrast you need on top of it she's paired it with a giant headpiece to really make a statement the only problem i have is she's not following the theme and but i always say if you're not going to follow the theme you better look good doing it and ava laqueen definitely looks good doing it now when it comes to the rating i'm a little bit torn because it is a very nice outfit but it's really not doing anything for me. And I don't know why, because clearly there's a lot of work put into this and clearly she looks good, but I'm just not in love with it. Is it a bad look? Absolutely not. Is it gonna get a drab? Absolutely not. Despite me not loving it, it's still good enough to get a bow. Next up, a representing a dry race Mexico, we have Galavaro. And Galavaro is coming out representing Boxing, uh, that is right. She's coming out in uh, these uh, green, white, and red boxing cape with these rhinestone boxing gloves, these uh, sort of shin pads, and this red hair. First, I'm gonna say, I didn't know that boxing had shin pads, and maybe it does, and maybe it doesn't, but I do like it with this look because it gives a little bit of a harder edge to the full vibe. Then she's paired it with this jacket that is oversized that's definitely giving me sort of boxing vibes, but it's got a little bit of that fringe to make it a little bit gay and a little bit drag. Then she paired it with this bright red hair in this ponytail that both gives you that sporty vibe but also gives you that drag vibe. This is the type of hair that I was actually hoping to see on Athena. I think this would have looked really cute. For the piece underneath, she's got this really simple bodysuit with this crisscross motif. But honestly, with everything else going on, I kind of okay with a simple bodysuit because it fits the vibe. This is really about the jacket, about the gloves, about the leg piece. Is. So the bodysuit is just really there and that's exactly what I ne it needs to be. Had this been way more over the top than it is now, then it would have felt a little bit uh, mismatch and try hard, but this feels just right. And because it feels just right, I'm going to go ahead and give it a perfect bow. Next up, representing the UK, we got Kitty Scott Claus. Kitty Scott Claus, for her look, has got badminton. She's coming out wearing this red, white, and blue dress with a Union Jack painted down the middle. She then paired it with this silver neck piece, this blonde ponytail, and this like chiffon fabric flowing off of her. First, let's talk about the dress. I love this dress piece underneath. It's definitely giving me sports vibes, but it's also giving me uh, Spice Girl vibes, a little ginger spice with a giant Union Jack at the front, but done in a more modern way. I also love this silver piece. I find this silver piece really originally and unique because when I think of UK, I don't necessarily think of silver, but the silver also gives me that metal vibe, which kind of gives me that badminton vibe. And speaking of badminton vibes, she's got this little flowing fabric at the back of her, which kind of gives me a vibes of that, what are they called? That ball? Not the ball. That they shoot in badminton? A shuttlecock. Yes, I did just look that up because I didn't know what it was called. The back of the dress kind of gives me a shuttlecock vibes. I also love uh, this ponytail with it. I think it gives you the sports vibes. All in all, I think this is a very good look and a very strong start for Miss Kitty Scott Claus. All in all, this is definitely going to be a Next up, 
representing New Zealand and Australia. That is right, from Drag Race Down Under, we have Queen Kong. Queen Kong is coming out wearing this silver bodysuit with all of these cutouts. She's then paired it with a silver jewelry and even a jaw piece. She's then paired it with a big black hair and this blue uh, jacket. She's giving you a little bit like that hammer throw uh, vibe with her promo look. I totally get what this queen was going for. I see her vision, but I just don't feel like it landed. I think the whole look just feels a little safe. I really wish she would have pushed it further. Because she's coming from the Polynesian Islands, I feel like this is not necessarily giving me hammer throw, but more giving me swimmer vibes. But it's also giving me superhero vibes, a little like Aquaman fantasy with the staff and these sort of uh, details on the bodysuit. The thing is, there's a few pieces that I'm just not understanding. First up, it is this chin strap and these piece in her hair. I don't feel like these go with the look. I feel like that she just wanted to add more because clearly a little bit more did need to be added and that's where I'm sort of like struggling with this one. I can see where she was going, but somehow it just feels a little unfinished to me. Had it been me and had I wanted to go into this vibe, I think that she actually should have done a uh, bodysuit underneath in a beige mesh that did sort of the Polynesian tattoos. I think that would have been really cool and brought this up a notch and give you more of that edge to it but also uh, channeled her culture because I'm sure she could find some amazing tattoo artists that would have painted this bodysuit for her in this more traditional style. I think that would have been really cool. Additionally this hair, although I love big hair, this one somehow just doesn't seem to fit with this outfit. All in all it's not really doing anything for me and since it's not really doing anything for me I'm gonna go ahead and give it a drab. Sorry babe. <laughs> Next up, representing the Drag Race Brazil, we have Miranda Libraro. And Miranda is coming out representing soccer, or as some parts of the world like to call it, football, the original football. She's coming out wearing this sort of black and white uh, headpiece representing that sort of soccer ball, but then she's got this green frilly dress draped on top of her. When this outfit came out, I immediately loved it. I thought this was a really cool interpretation of soccer. We've, we've seen a few soccer is done on, dr on Drag Race. I immediately think of someone like Jan Sport who did soccer, but this is done in a completely different way. This is definitely feeling a little bit more avant-garde a little bit more club kit and I kind of love that. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I like things that are a little bit weird, a little bit kooky, and I generally don't do pretty. Like today, this is an exception because this is a first episode. Usually I like to take change this up and that's what this does. It changes it up. This feels really original because of this like black and white a piece underneath, but then it's got the traditional top with this green dress. It's really this juxtaposition of like a new school, old school, which I am really loving. I think this is a super cool, super fun, super elegant and super avant-garde and definitely gonna be a super bow. representing a drag race Italia we have Nelelia girl I always butcher her name and I speak Italian I feel so bad for that but let's get into this look she's coming out wearing this green and white laced up bodysuit with these white thigh-high boots and this sort of green mesh top she then paired it with a blonde hair and a sort of a green mesh cape I think this is a really interesting look. First up, I find it interesting that she decided to go with green and white and really didn't put that much red in it to make it that Italian flag, but I kind of like that because it makes this feel a little bit less gimmicky. Now, could she have done a little red lace up here and there? Yes, she can, but she did also bring in some of the red in the accessories, which I appreciate. The look that she's going for is supposedly a little bit more of a cycling look, which I can potentially see is cycling, but sure. But what I do appreciate is really the construction of this bodysuit. It really feels much more than just a bodysuit. It is got these details on the hips, uh, the breast cups feel really uh, detailed out. This lace feels really tucked in. It definitely feels like there is a lot of work put into this small piece. She then paired it with just the right amount of accessories with the white boot and this sort of a green a top to really give you a complete look. Now, is it the most original 
original thing I have seen? Absolutely not. It is still at the end of the day a bodysuit. But realistically, there's only so many silhouettes you can do in drag. So a bodysuit is one of those ones you are gonna go to, especially if you wanna get use out of this look after drag race. Drag queens wear bodysuits the most because they're the easiest to perform in. That being said, I do like that she added this sort of mesh uh, capelet and these solid pieces in her hair and the side of her that feel like they are flying away, kind of as if she's biking in the wind and this fabric is flowing. I also like that the fabrics all contrast off of each other to give you a little bit more dimension, which you absolutely need when you are working with a very limited color palette, which she is. All in all, I think this is a good look. Not the most crazy original, but definitely still good enough to get a buff. Next up, uh, representing Canada and Canada's Drag Race, we have Pythia, and Pythia is coming out giving you a fencing look. Pythia is coming out with this white bodysuit inspired by a fencing outfit with these red gashes all over her, kind of as if the fencing sword just slashed her. At the tip of her fingernail, you see that she is the sword. I love this look. Pathea is one of those queens that definitely likes to take things a little bit kooky and a little bit next level. So this is exactly what is expected for her. And this is exactly why I was so excited to see her come back. She was the queen I was rooting for the most on her season, but definitely failed a little bit in the lip syncs, but the fashion were fashioning and she is showing that with this look. She is coming out making a statement, but keeping it Pathea in her original style. I love the pairing with this hair, which is like this white sort of cosplay inspired uh, hair that is swooshed to the end with the little red rhinestones on it. In fact, she's got so many rhinestones everywhere, but it's kind of got like this glamorous blood vibes to it which I totally vibe. All in all this is so excellent and definitely gonna be a buff. Next up representing France. Ah! We have Soa the Muse. So the Muse is coming out wearing this white one-piece bathing suit and she's paired it with white thigh-high boots with red and blue detailing across it. She then got this white sort of like little puffy sleeve jacket with blue and red detailing on it and she's paired it with a little kitty cat wig. I really think this is a really smart take on the Olympic theme because she's coming out representing diving or swimming. So to come out with a bathing suit makes perfect sense. But when you're doing a bathing suit, it's kind of a little bit basic and you have to add to it some way. So she gave you the coolest boots that kind of give you this sort of like biker vibe and really elevated this look. And then she's given you this sort of jacket that's definitely giving you a little bit more of that urban feel that totally lifts up this bathing suit from being basic to really cool. But having watched Drag Race France, that is one of the things that So The Muse does really well is that she's able to take something that is quite basic and elevate it to the next level. She definitely got her own original like French urban styling into it. French because she always likes to elevate it but urban because it definitely feels like it's coming from the streets but maybe more like the fashion streets. I also love this hair with it which is surprising because I'm always more of a bigger hair better sort of vibes but this smaller hair kind of works with this outfit because First up, with this sort of jacket, you definitely need hair that's a little bit higher and off your face. And I feel like any sort of coiffed hair would not work with the swimming vibe. But this flat hair kind of gives me bathing cap vibes, but also keeps it off of her face. So I think this is a perfect hair choice for this outfit. Actually, had I got this theme, I think I would have struggled to find a hair and this totally works. All in all, I think this is a really smart interpretation of diving and swimming and done in a pretty cool way. It just got a vibe to it. And because it's got a vibe to it, I'm going to go ahead and give it a buff. Next up from Drag Race Germany, we have Tessa Testicle. Tessa is coming out giving you a full archery vibe. She is coming out wearing red and a white a bustier top with these big hips. She then paired it with this thigh high 
leg warmers, this big bustling back, and these black and red sleeves. First up, I'm going to say I'm already loving Tessa testicle. Now, personally, I did not watch Drag Race Germany. So when Tessa was announced, I didn't really have necessarily an opinion on her. On top of it, she's the only one that is sort of a lower placement queen. Most of the queens on this season came in the top four and Tessa testicle came much lower. I think it was around eighth place. So coming into it, I was definitely thinking that she was going to be the struggle bus. But then she comes out with this look and mama, I love this look. First up, you were representing Germany. So I was totally expecting her to do like the red, yellow and black vibes. But she kind of like omitted the yellow and definitely went just with the red and black with a little bit of white in there, which was a, which was surprising, but totally works. It's definitely giving you that fierceness that archery has, but it's also definitely got that fashion element that you need for drag race. I also feel like this has got a little bit of those like Katniss Everdeen vibes but like in the best way because she definitely feels like the girl on fire she's coming to kick your butt ultimately I just really love this look if this is what Tessa testicle is showing on her promo look I'm so excited to get to know her on this season because this is just simply amazing personally this is not a look that I would have thought of when you said her archery but this is definitely the look that I need and that is why she is getting a bow Finally, representing Sweden, we have Vanity Vane. And Vanity Vane is coming out wearing this uh, blue leotard with these stars all over it. She then got fringe on her arms and yellow hair. She's definitely representing the Swedish flag with the blue and yellow. And I think that the Swedish flag is one of those ones that's a little bit harder to do than most flags, just because it can look IKEA really quickly. So I really appreciate that this did not feel like Ikea. It definitely felt like sports. Personally, I got gymnastics from this because it definitely felt like something that you would do a backflip in on the floor, but she is actually representing running. I definitely did not see running into this. So that was a little bit like, huh? Now the thing about Drag Race Sweden, if you watched it, which I did, is that you had a lot of high highs and you had a lot of low lows, meaning that the queens were not at the same level at all. To see her come out with this look, with this set of queens, she is definitely on the lower end. And that is kind of shocking. This definitely doesn't feel elegant and it definitely doesn't look expensive. If this is what she is showing for her promo look, I am really curious what's gonna happen to her all season because the promo look is usually where a lot of these queens do their best work because they have more time to prepare for it. So I'm really hoping that Vanity can turn it up this season. But that all being said, let's get more into this look. I think that it is unfinished. I feel like there could have been more done to it. Her legs are so bare. I wish there was something going on. Maybe if she did like tights with stars on them to continue the star motif, I think that might have helped. She then paired it with this giant chunky yellow boot, which definitely works from a color point of view, but I find that the way that the boot hits her is a little bit weird. I hate when the queen's wearing this booty and this bodysuit because it makes her leg look shorter and she's got long legs. So I wish she would have done just like a normal heel or something really crazy inspired by running or a sneaker of some sort. I think that could have been it as well. All in all, this has a lot to be desired and because it has a lot to be desired, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a drab. <laughs> And there we have it, 12 queens from 12 different franchises competing for the crown. Girl, I am so, so excited for this season. I can't wait. This is one that I've been waiting for for quite some time and it's just around the corner. If you'd like to see me do another one of these videos, well, make sure to subscribe because I will be dropping an entrance look video later this week. But enough about that, let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fab and drab of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week goes to... Vanity Vane. I just felt like this one was just not enough, especially considered how much these queens were turning it up. This was just simply not enough, and I hope she does better throughout the season. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, this week was a little bit of a difficult decision because I gave multiple five-star looks. But who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week goes to... 
Tessa Testicle. Ultimately, this came out of a surprise to me. I wasn't expecting this from Tessa Testicle. I also wasn't expecting this from an archery look or from a German flag look. All in all, this was super cool, super vibey, and super fab. And that's why she got my fab of the week. Y'all, that is it for this week's episode. If you want to see more on Global All-Stars, make sure to subscribe below because I will be dropping an episode on the entrance looks very shortly later this week. And while you're down there, let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with my thoughts. Let me know who you thought had the fab and drive of the week. I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.